YouTube friends and family to the long awaited fall crafting episode. So this may be in two parts. And also I may need to film this over a few days. Um, it'll just be a moment for you. But if I, my clothes change, my hair changes, you'll know why. So yeah, whew, I'm already hot. <laughs> Y'all, I rarely wear my hair down because I have very frizzy hair and it annoys me to death, especially in hot weather, but it's still nice and cool today. So I thought, why not? Right? So the recipe I'm going to share with you today is out of this fun little book. It's all for you, frightfully fun Halloween handbook. So I'd actually checked this out for free at the local library and I loved it so much. I wanted to own a copy. So it has all sorts of things in here. It has, um, outdoor displays, pumpkin and gourd decorating, party themes, sweets and treats, costumes. It has everything, guys. It's so cool. And with my love of fall and Halloween, I thought, if we're going to craft, we need a treat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. So we're going to make some flying brooms. I hope you'll stay All tuned, right, y'all. This is a very simple recipe. So in the mixer bowl, I have placed one stick of butter and it calls for unsalted and I thought out salted, so I'm sure it'll be fine. So to this, first we're going to beat it up real good and it does say with an electric mixer. So we'll get it smushed up. And then to that, we're gonna add half cup of brown sugar. And it says add it slowly. And you wanna beat that until it is light and fluffy. And so you all don't have to listen to me try to speak over the mixer. <laughs> Let me get this whipped up and I'll bring you back and we'll talk about next ingredients. All right guys, I've got it light and fluffy. And now we're gonna add in, gradually, one cup of flour. Y'all, you could totally do this with a hand mixer, just saying. And this is a hand-shaped cookie. So the dough is going to be stiff because we're going to be rolling it out into balls. Now it does call for a teaspoon of salt. So I'm just going to add a little pinch. And if you've never used the Redmond Real Salt, that's what it looks like. And y'all, so far I'm impressed with the taste and people are correct. You can taste the minerals in it in a good way. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of, woo, not that whole thing, some organic powdered vanilla. Maybe like a teaspoon. I try to add that y'all to anything that calls for vanilla extract. And then our final ingredient is just a teaspoon of vanilla extract. It looks kind of dry, just so y'all know, I'll show you here in just a minute. I'm going to preheat my oven to 350, and then we'll, we'll get on to the fun part of making them into my brooms. Jobs. So, next thing we're going to do is you need some long pretzel rods, and we're going to break them approximately in half. I couldn't do that twice if I tried. Wow. And I don't think it really matters how short or long they are. So this is going to be the handle of the broom. How cool is that, right? 
And I'm thinking we're only gonna be able to get about nine on a cookie sheet. So I'm gonna need to do two bakings and that's okay. Let's see. Turn them all the, all the same way. Oh, y'all can't see, can ya? Okay, this is supposed to make 16 cookies. And what it says to do is to roll them into a ball. Wow, that is really, really hard to get to stick together. Okay, that's better. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try to make it a pretty smooth ball. Wow, I hope these come out. They feel really crumbly. <laughs> okay. And you're gonna stick this on the end of your pretzel rod, like so. So I'm at least gonna try to make them all the same size. It says it makes 16. What I think would be really, really good on this, yeah, that one's too big, would be to make peanut butter cookies because there's a little bit of chocolate involved. So I was thinking like a Reese cup, but I don't think it matters what flavor of cookie. I'm just sharing the recipe that was in the magazine. So before I do all of these and find out I need to go to plan B, let me, so what you do is you grab a fork and you wanna press down so that it looks like bristles on a broom. How cool is that? And if the pretzel falls off, wow, these are so crumbly, y'all. Did I forget the ingredient? Nope. Okay. Well, I'm not happy with that. I want cute brooms. Okay, that feels a little better. Let's get this the right way, okay. Oh, that looks much better. So here's the secret, guys. Even though this is kind of of a weird consistency, roll the ball really tightly and don't smush it down like I did. Just lay it on top here. And then, eat. I don't know, guys. And then make your brooms marks. Okay, those don't look so bad, do they? <laughs> so I'm gonna finish this up. You bake them for 10 to 12 minutes, let them cool on the baking sheet for two minutes, then they'll go to a wire rack and we'll get to decorating them when they're fully cool. All right, Stay John. tuned. So this might look like somewhat of a Pinterest fail, but I'm gonna go with it. So if you have a favorite recipe, and I'll, I'll tell you what I'm doing here in just a moment. If you have a favorite cookie recipe, that might be a better bet just because these did not um, handle the way I would have liked them to. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking some melting chocolate and I will show you the package here in a minute. And I'm going over the junction in between the pretzel and the cookie, i.e. broom. because now I only had one that fell apart when I took it off, but it will help strengthen that bond for sure. I think these would be really, really good with peanut butter cookies. And I may make these again because of course I have a lot of supplies left over. And I also like to take little treats to my neighbors on either side of me, they both have small, they either have kids or small kids, <laughs> how about that? And so what it calls for is two two ounce blocks of melting chocolate. Well, I was looking at the chocolate at Walmart and I was over in the cake decorating section and you'll see why shortly. And I thought, wow, man, these are so expensive. They were like $6.98 for a package of chocolate. And I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> we 
sweet. Yeah, no, <laughs> not going to happen. So I'll show you what I found. I found the melting wafers and not being a huge fan of chocolate. It doesn't need to be intensely chocolate for me, but you all pick the kind of chocolate that you like. So now what we need to do is let that set. And then these are the chocolate wafers that I got. They're called Meltums. And guys, it was 50 cents. I'm like, yeah, buddy, that's my prize. So I way over melted. I just guesstimated. So I'm going to get a piece of wax paper. I'm going to spread the chocolate out on that, let it harden, break it up, put it back in the bag. No sense to waste. Once these harden up, we'll do our final day decor on them. Um, I mean, you could really do them any way you want, y'all. You could drizzle the chocolate up the broom handle if you like a little bit more chocolate taste. In fact, let's do a couple like that. It would probably, uh, yeah, let's use a fork <laughs> before it even starts. I think a fork works better. Ooh, it's thickening up for thinner lines. Like yay. So, gives you kind of that rustic broom look. Plus, it uses up the excess chocolate. I like that. And these are the last three, the ones that have the smaller cookies. The ones that are more spread out, I bet, is, are going to be delicious with that crispy edge. But technically, I think I made them a little big. I ended up with 12, and the recipe says it makes 16. So, yeah. I'm digging on this chocolate on the pretzel because who wants to eat just a plain pretzel after you've had all that ooey gooey sweet cookie and that'll be a little less chocolate that I have to save it is getting a little bit thick but I think it adds a little something something to it what do you guys think I love the treats that come along at the holidays I love themed treats you know like Halloween I even like the creepy stuff, like the meatloaf hands and things like that. <laughs> I don't know, how old am I, 12? I really miss having, you know, a little kid at home um, some days. Let me, let me put it that way. <laughs> I'm a little bit old to be having children, but I sure would love to have some grands. But so far, that has not been in the works for me. All right, let's see here. Well, that got rid of quite a bit of the chocolate and I think added a little something something to our brooms. So let me let this set up and I will bring you back. We will do the final little highlight on them, plate them up, and then I'm going to show you our first craft. I hope you'll stay tuned. So y'all, I'm actually pleased with how these came out. I think they look like little witchy brooms. So in the same aisle that I got the melting wafers, and let me tell you all, they are way better than that block chocolate. They're very creamy, very smooth, and I'm not a fan of chocolate. I don't hate it, I just don't love it. But I got some Wilton Sparkle Gel. So the little icings were 367. This was on clearance in a much bigger item for $1.50. So <clears throat> I thought that was reasonable. But let me tell y'all, they did not have orange. In the picture, let me show you this. The picture that shows these, <laughs> see why I said Pinterest fail, shows orange. Well, the only thing they had was red. And I am super cautious about red dyes. So I chose not to do it. And I'm like, why not spooky green? So you wanna do it like laces, you know, on a broom. So this is glittery and cute and I think just fine. Yeah, buddy. And you do wanna make sure that your chocolate has set before you do this. Otherwise, you'll just kind of end up with a mess. 
Y'all, I think these are adorbs. The one thing I probably would do differently is I would probably make peanut butter cookies. And, and that's kind of a me thing. Y'all, I love peanut butter cookies. I, I will tell you, I'm not super impressed with this cookie recipe. I have not tasted one yet. We'll do that in a moment. It was just very difficult to handle, and I think there are recipes that would be a little easier. And you know, a peanut butter cookie is designed to be flattened, so it might cooperate a little better and not look like a Pinterest fail, but I actually think these are super cute. Now this will set up over time, but you only think these are adorable. How about that? All right, let me get these trade up. We'll taste one together. I'm thinking the big one. <laughs> what do y'all think? And then we're gonna get into our first craft. So stay tuned. All right, y'all, how cute is this tray? So this is a vintage remake tray. It has a cat on it. You can't really see with all the accoutrement in there. But let's try a witch's broom. What do you say? Mmm. Wow. So everything I said about change up the cookie recipe, I take it back. Because it has brown sugar, it almost has like a butterscotch taste. Mm. Very, very good, y'all. Can't say anything negative about it. Well, let me red up the kitchen. Mm. Finish my cookie. And we're gonna get on to our first craft, which is super simple. Anybody can do it, even if you're not a crafter. Stay tuned. All right, y'all, as promised, on to our first craft. So, I purchased this carvable pumpkin from Joanne Fabric. They have the same 40% off sale like Hobby Lobby and all the Michaels type places do. Excuse me, y'all, me and my hiccups. So, what I've done here, is I took a measuring tape, I measured one inch out, did some little dots, and I decided that's how big I want to cut the top off. Now, I did not pre-try this, so I think this will work. Usually a serrated knife is a good way to cut through. <laughs> If you don't know your own strength, be careful. Um, pretty much any type knife I think will work. I'm not super crazy about how thick that blade is. Let me try this one. And I'm just using kitchen knife, guys. If you have a craft knife, you could use that as well. Yeah, this is definitely easier. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're actually going to make a vase or a vase out of this pumpkin. So you just wanna make sure you're going through to the hollow part. And I am not gonna throw away the little top because one of the things you could do is you could display the top beside it. You could punch a hole like with a, a nail, you know, just hammer a nail through, punch a hole in the top, um, tie it through, you know, feed a, use a needle, feed a piece of twine or something like that through, or even if you didn't want that to show so much, you could use monofilament, you know, like clear threads. <laughs> this would probably be easier if I were about six inches taller, right? Okay, we're getting there. So again, craft knife might be easier. Do I have a craft knife, you ask? Well, yes, yes I do. <laughs> but this'll work too. We're getting around here. I was thinking with the serrated, because I've, I've used these carvable pumpkins before. I thought that was what I used, but, you know, materials change, so that may be why. 
This is a nice sturdy one. You could paint your pumpkin. You could put um, like <laughs> antiquing wax on your pumpkin. You know, if you wanted to change up the look. I'm gonna start with just the pure cream pumpkin and maybe in subsequent years, if I wanna change up the look or if it gets a little dog-eared looking, I can then, you know, put a glaze on it or highlight the lines. Why is this so hard? <laughs> First a Pinterest fail. Well, it didn't turn out to be such a Pinterest fail. Okay. So here, woo. Talk about a styrofoam smell. So here we have our little lid. And like I said, you could hook it onto the side like this. That would be cute. Um, now what you get to decide is what do you want to do with it? And I want to just sh share something with you all. I know not everyone is a fan of Halloween. I understand that. And if that is your conviction, uh, please. Hello, Frankie. You came to help us. You, you'll see him in a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There. Mm. Don't show your hind end. Go on. Go on with it. He's like, I, I smell in those cookies, Mama. <laughs> I totally understand if Halloween isn't your jam. I personally don't worship Halloween. I don't um, feel like it's a wrong thing for me. But again, y'all have to do you. So you've got a couple options. So one of the thoughts that I had and I just wanted to share some of these with you, is these, with the, let me take this one out. These are Dollar Tree picks right here. So they have these type of sunflower, nope, those came from Joanne, sorry guys. They have these kind of sunflowers. They have the really pretty leaves, I love these. They have these type of leaves, and they have like these feathery things. I'm not sure where these came from, but I know Dollar Tree has them. So if you want to match your decor, you can put picks in. And let me just show you how pretty, and I didn't do any arranging or even take tags off. How pretty of an arrangement can, could you make? I probably need a couple of those blue picks. So this would be really nice just for fall straight up or for Thanksgiving. And I didn't even put in the orange ones that I have. I would probably take out these blue pumpkins. But today, y'all, and these, this came from, oh, no, this was a Walmart buy. Look how pretty those are. They're ridiculous. So they're not technically a fall um, plant, but I like the leaf shape on them. It's kind of like an oak leaf. So I always have flowers for, um, cemetery <sighs> and I'm gonna need to go do that pretty soon y'all um, in order to bury my mom they had to dig up the headstone and it still needs to be engraved with her death year so it didn't it, it's very hard for me to go to the cemetery when it was, you know, a freshly dug grave. So I've been once, but I'd like to go. Um, my parents would have been married 73 years as of November 18th. So I'll probably go on their anniversary and just sit on the hillside and have a little chit chat with them, which I know they can't hear me, but that's okay. It does my heart good. All right, off of the sadness. Guys, when I was in Walmart, look. Wah is this the coolest so it has the pumpkins it has the black and they are glittery but they're not excessively okay maybe maybe slightly excessively glittery the pretty flowers look at this flower lacy um some of this glittery stuff but the cool thing is the spooky <laughs> i was like i so need this so voila right? So you usually have to do a little fiddling, you know, when you're doing an arrangement to get things kind of like you want them. But yes, that skeleton hand has to be front and center. And I also think, and this by the way was, um, I think 6.98 or 
six something eight. You know how Walmart is. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna add in just a little bit of this orange just to kind of, you know, fill it out a little bit. And again, guys, you can, you can, <laughs> hello. You can bend them around. Um, I just thought this was so, so cool <laughs> for Halloween. And how long did that take us? Like five minutes. And this is what it looks like in the back. This is what it looks like in the front. And I can play with it a little bit, but the possibilities are endless. As I said, you can pick stems that aren't necessarily seasonal. You could pick things that more match your decor, but I think this is gonna be super cute if I can keep Frankie from chewing on it. <laughs> oh, I love my cat. I love my cat. <laughs> I really do. Look at him. He's waiting for me to give him a drink out of the sink because uh, his bowl of fresh water that is reverse osmosis filtered water isn't good enough. <laughs> so drop me a comment below. Would you be interested in doing a pumpkin like this? I mean, it's super, super simple. You could let your littles or your grandkids or your kids pick out some of the stems to go in. There's just so much and you can get so many great things at the Dollar Tree. If I said Dollar General, I meant Dollar Tree because the rest of these picks are from Dollar Tree. So just to give you an example, I don't want to like weird it up too much, but let's let's put some of these leaves in here to kind of fill it out. I like a really full bouquet. So yeah, you could put in touches of color so that it looked a little different depending on the angle. You could add height. And that is another thing I noticed at the Dollar Tree was they had a lot of variation, if you will, on like height. So if you want like a, like a high center, you know, you could do that. Now, I personally don't like the leaves in it, but just to give you an idea of how much you can fill it out, this is more of a, <clears throat> just ignore that, more of a fall look on this side, more of a Halloween look on this side. I gotta work on that hand. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool, y'all. So that's graph number one. Let's move on and talk a little bit about craft number two. If I change clothes and my hair is different, it's a different day. All right, guys, stay tuned. As I said, my hair would probably change. <laughs> my outfit would change. It's actually a couple days later, y'all. But I got thinking, you know, we didn't talk a lot about the seeds once I'd let them set. So I have a lovely science experiment going on. But as you see, the seeds have floated to the bottom. And it, it, it smells a little, mm. so what you want to do is just take off the mold. And I still have like, I'll call it tomato guts in here. And I'm trying not to cross my seeds. <laughs> and we are going to get back to the craft, guys. Um... Smells a little feisty in there. So, guys, I have to say I'm impressed with how easy this is. Perhaps I will no longer let my son enable me. What I'm doing here is I'm just pulling out some of the big gobs because I have a gracious plenty of uh, seeds. But they're kind of plumped up, I guess, because they've been in water, but they have not sprouted. So that was one thing. I can't remember if I told you all this. You don't want to leave them too long because they will start to sprout and then you won't have tomato seed. So you want to rinse them really good. You know, get any mold spores out of it. But yeah, guys, I'm super impressed. This is my... Uh, my BS tomatoes, but what does that stand for? 
I kind of forget. Big boy, better boy. Oh well. They're BS tomatoes. <laughs> so what I'm doing so that I don't waste paper towel is I'm just taking my labeled paper towel here and I'm just dumping the seeds out right on top. Beef steak. <laughs> I knew it would come to me. Come to me. <laughs> and what you want to do now is just let them dry. So I'm going to spread them out like that. And that's all there is to it, guys. So easy. So I'll still let my son do some for me because uh, he enjoys doing that. He also has a friend that he works with that will seed exchange with him um, for me. <laughs> so that's kind of nice. So I'm going to finish up this last one and then let's do our second craft. What do you say? Stay tuned. All right, y'all. Let's get into a craft. So just off screen here, Frankie decided he wanted to help. So I want to give a shout out to Life of Style blog, and I'll be linking her blog post that has the link, link to print off these beautiful fall photographs. So... I'm probably going to have to reposition the camera, but here we go. So there's this. There's four of them. This one. This one. And this one. If you lay them all out, Frankie, you're not so incognito. He's like, I lay over here in the sink, Mama. Oh, I love my cat, but... It can be a challenge sometimes. Let me reposition the camera so that you're actually looking down on this project because I think it'll make more sense. Okay, this is much better. So what I have here from the Dollar Tree are four gold toned <laughs> frames and they are five by sevens. And the idea here is, We're going to lay these out. We're actually going to be gluing them together so that, and I am going to leave the glass in them, so that it, it's like you're looking out of a window at fall time. So what you have to do is figure out which order uh, these go in so that they're, as you see, matched up. And the tree trunks match. Excuse my growling stomach, guys. I did eat breakfast. <laughs> so isn't that going to be lovely? So the challenge here is going to be first, this image, what I found, is a little larger. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the frame apart so these just pull off like yay. And you can use the paper kind of as your guide. So that should line them up perfectly by going off the left. On this one, um, you kind of have a choice. Do you want the path? Which I th think I do. <laughs> so I'll also line it up like this. So I'm just gonna take a pencil and I did print this in color on cardstock. So I'm just gonna take a pencil. I am going to mark my cut lines on all four. And then I am going to, you could use scissors. I'm gonna actually use uh, this Fiskars paper trimmer to get cleaner lines. So let me get this marked off. I'm going to put them in the frame and then I'm going to talk about how we adhere them all together. 
All right, uh, one of the things I realized was if I cut this at the top, the tree trunk is gonna zigzag. So I'm cutting this one so that I get this portion and this one so I get the bottom portion. Now, um, I think that's what I wanna do on both of these. And guess what, if it doesn't line up, it's as simple as reprinting your pages. So, here we go. And y'all excuse my much loved mat. <laughs> so, just want to line up your lines. And then, of course, just cut the white off. So far, really, really simple, right, y'all? I just thought this was so cute of an idea. So let's go ahead and put one of these in just to see how we look here. So not bad, right? Okay, I'm gonna keep doing the same thing till I have them all four put together and then I will bring you back. We'll talk about how to assemble them all together. All right, y'all, I am tickled. So I definitely liked using the bottom. I wanted the path in there. Um, because of the configuration of the frame, this trunk was kind of a non-issue, but these two lined up nicely. So. Now we need to keep the cat off of them. <laughs> but we're going to glue them together and I am going to use some E6000. Now, I will tell you all, I was kind of disappointed in, I believe this, wait, is that how you do it? I forget how you do it. In the Dollar Tree, I went to two Dollar Trees. Um, perhaps I'm a little late because I do know that, you know, this is kind of a, a big deal. Dollar Tree Crafts, you know, or how do you get that coat? I guess like that? Okay, yeah. Okay. And this must screw onto that. Okay, there we go. They didn't have any E6000. And when I was asking about it, they acted like I had three heads. So I'm not really sure if maybe Dollar Tree is not um, stocking it anymore. I don't really know what, what the deal is. Okay, I do not want to do this wrong. Okay, so that is correct. This should not be this hard, guys. Um, yeah. yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. So, what the gal actually did was she used a combination of hot glue and E6000 so that instant hold as well as, you know, a more permanent hold. So let me grab my hot glue gun. I wasn't gonna use it, but I think um, just as slippery as these can be, I think that might make more sense. So let me do that. And guys, if you don't like these, you can pull them off. I'm not gonna do that because I may choose to change out the pictures, um, take them back apart and paint the frames, you know? So this is not a one and done. You could recycle the materials. So let me get my glue gun. All right, y'all. Got my glue gun. Let 
in my E6000. Okay. Why is this not coming out? Oh, there it comes. <laughs> Never mind. And I probably should have done the E6000 first because I bet my hot glue has hardened up. So let's just give it an extra loop for good measure and stick them together. Now you could, excuse all the strings, you could put like popsicle sticks, um, you know, like this way to kind of support them. I think I glued that down, didn't I? Okay, there we go. My idea is maybe I can set this up by using these little balancey things. Okay, might have glued it there. All right. So first I'm gonna glue each of the two side-by-sides and then I will do the long. Hello, Frankie. Wow, this is, takes a lot of pressure to get it out. I must not have gotten the hole big enough, but hey. Are you comfy, Frankie? Yeah, if you don't like cats on the countertop, I understand. I don't either. Watch your tail, yes. Watch your tail. <sighs> All right. So yeah, that kind of gives it that instant hold. Ooh, I, yeah. So let me let this dry a bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to do the long side and then just let it set. And I will bring you back at the very end and we'll do a quick review of our crafts. All right, y'all. So I can't remember if I shared this the downfall of doing a video over multiple days. This is a Dollar Tree item. It was $5. I thought it was so vintage cool. I also have here our pumpkin that we made, uh, maybe with some fuzzies from the leaves. I did get a second um, bouquet with the spooky hand at uh, Walmart, but I just think it looks absolutely lovely. And then, y'all, down here, let's see if I can do this. I don't want to pick it up, is our picture frame project. So, what can I tell you? Well, I got some hot glue um, in various places. So, once it's fully hardened, I'll just, you know, pick it off like that. And I think this is absolutely lovely. It would be great in a room that you don't have a window, so maybe a restroom. I think it's just charming and really pretty. You could also take some gold paint and kind of cover where the glue blobs that I left <laughs> are showing. But all in all, I really like it. So, let's have some final thoughts here, guys. I'm struggling with my ring light, can you tell? I'll just lean a little bit. So I hope today's video kind of puts you in the mood to celebrate whether you're into spooky season or you just prefer fall. We've kind of done some of each. And I, I know the cookies were witches brooms as well, but you could change up the flowers in your pumpkin. Um, as we discussed, you could make a different treat. Um, you could shape them into pumpkins. That cookie is absolutely delicious. I'm having a hard time staying out of them. Just saying. <laughs> All right, y'all. I have more crafts to come. Um, I'm trying to get this video finished so you'll have a video for Tuesday and that'll buy me a couple days uh, until I need to have another video up again. Guys, I got a little bit behind and I want to ask you a favor, if you would. Yes, I would like for you to smash that like button and I want you to leave me a comment. Are you in the mood? Are you team fall or team Halloween? That would be a good one to find out because I know a lot of people don't like Halloween. I have been having uh, a little issue. <laughs> you all are probably tired of hearing about this. So um, I started with numbness in these two fingers. 
And I have learned that you can get base. Everybody knows what carpal tunnel is, right? You can get cubital tunnel. So an entrapment of your ulnar nerve, which innervates these fingers. Um, sometimes it's from a trauma, like falling down. Sometimes it's from overuse. So people who rest on their elbow a lot. Um, so I did visit the doctor yesterday and He's prescribed a protective brace, we'll say, which uh, I won't have for a couple more days. And I'm doing exercises to try and resolve it. But guys, it's maddening. <laughs> it's painful, but not agonizing, but it's super, super annoying. And it really does affect your grip strength. And um, I might have dropped an egg on Frankie's head. <laughs> He was like, what are you doing, my mom? I was being good boy. So if you are thus inclined, I would greatly covet your prayers that this will just heal up because the nerve can be entrapped at your elbow, at your shoulder, at your collarbone, or unfortunately at your eighth cervical vertebrae. And I've already had one neck surgery, so I'm hoping it's not coming from my neck. But at any rate, I will see you all a little bit later this week. Thanks for your time today. I hope you enjoyed it. And until I see you again, be healthy, be well, be blessed. Take care.